Howdy, it's Kyle with your geography news for March 2020. In January, the biggest news worldwide was just a sheer amount of volcanic activity going on on the Pacific Ring of Fire. Fortunately, there wasn't anywhere near as much volcanic activity in February as there was in January, but the number one site for volcanic activity in January, which was the Mount Taal volcano in the Philippines, had much seismic activity in February. Over a course of 48 hours on the 10th and 11th, there were 77 earthquakes near the volcano. Earthquakes around volcanic eruptions are going to be common, but this is a pretty large number to have in a short period of time. 11 of those earthquakes were harmonic tremors, which are often precursors to larger volcanic eruptions, so there was thought there might be another eruption. Thankfully, there was not, but 77 earthquakes over the course of two days is still pretty significant. And now, closer to home, another type of eruption that's been going on, ice volcanoes on Lake Michigan. These are pretty rare formations that occur when it's cold enough for ice to accumulate on a shoreline. If the waves are strong enough underneath the surface of the ice, they can push water and ice to the surface, creates kind of a dome structure right there. And it'll keep pushing the water and ice to the surface, and if it pops through a little hole in the ice, it'll create a little volcano with some water shooting in the air, and if it's cold enough temperature outside, the water will turn into ice, so it kind of shoots ice out of it, so it's an ice volcano. Another interesting phenomenon that some of you people that live where it gets cold have to deal with are ice quakes or frost quakes. These do occur naturally, but they've been happening with a higher frequency in Maine this February. These can occur where there was a pretty large temperature drop, so say it's well above freezing and it gets to well below freezing in a pretty short period of time. Any water beneath the surface will freeze pretty quickly and expands and that can cause crack and rock and that can lead to kind of a loud explosion type thing and it can be pretty loud and it's called an ice quake or a frost quake. So that's got to be pretty jarring to hear an explosion like that going off in your yard. But yeah, for me, that's just one more reason to not live somewhere that gets that cold. And now for some news regarding a few national parks in the U.S. In mid-February, the entirety of Mount Rainier National Park in Washington was closed. All of the roads that lead into the park had to be closed due to incredible flooding and mud flows going on in the area. And so once you get the soil completely saturated, you're going to get mud flows and all kinds of nasty conditions. So all the roads had to be closed. It's pretty common for one or two roads to be closed off into a national park, but because they were all closed, effectively the national park itself was closed and people staying inside the park had to be evacuated. In similar news, there's been some traffic disruptions at Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Mud and debris on one of the roads that goes through the park caused some closures. The Cades Cove Loop Road, which is one of the more popular roads inside the park, is closed for the month for tunnel repair. And Cove Creek Road, which is one of the roads that brings you into the park from the North Carolina side, is closed for hillside stabilization. And this area has seen all kinds of issues with the road closures through the years. This is about two hours from where I live, and I remember a time when the interstate itself was closed for over a year due to some landslides and mud. And if you've ever driven I-40 around the Tennessee-North Carolina border around Great Smoky Mountains National Park, it's a beautiful drive, but the land there is very unstable. And in more National Park news, there's been a little bit of a disagreement with how to deal with increased visitation at Zion National Park in southwestern Utah. Visitation to the park has almost doubled since 2010. I was there back in 2010 and again back in 2016. You could see a big time increase in the number of visitors to the park. A big reason for this is how many people are moving to Las Vegas, which is only a couple hours away. So with so many folks living right there, it's really easy to get to Zion for just a real short day trip. So as a result of the park becoming overcrowded, the National Park Service has recommended a reservation system for people to visit the park. But Utah politicians are against this proposal as they believe it will lower the total number of people that are visiting the park and thus reducing revenue. But Zion is one of the most overcrowded parks in the country, so... I've had to use a shuttle when I was there, and it was pretty useful, but I think it's the kind of park where something's going to have to be done because it really is getting out of control overcrowded. The 2019 County Health Ranking study results are now available, and the results are pretty interesting. The study looked at various factors, including obesity rates, smoking rates, access to healthy foods, air and water quality, teen birth rates, life expectancy, and many other factors to kind of get an idea of what are the healthiest and unhealthiest counties in the U.S., in terms of the 50 unhealthiest counties, there was one each in Arizona, California, Delaware, Indiana, Maryland, New York, and Pennsylvania, but the other 43 of the 50 unhealthiest counties in the country 
were all in the southeast. And this includes each of the top 13. So the south is pretty well known for being the unhealthiest part of the country. But I didn't realize it was this much worse than the rest of the country. But people in the south will often say stuff like, well, it's because our food is so good. That's why we're so fat. But there's a lot more to it than that. Food is great wherever you go in the country and people eat unhealthily wherever you go in the country. But people also tend to be less active in the south and smoking rates are actually still kind of high. And I think studies like this are often undervalued because when you're talking about health and life expectancy, that's pretty important. So you look at the states that have the longest life expectancy, over 80 years, and other states have barely 73, 74 years. So you can live in a healthier state and theoretically live seven or eight years longer. That's a pretty big deal to live that much longer than people that are living in unhealthy states. And in further news regarding an overcrowded tourist site, the accessibility at the Machu Picchu site in Peru is being increased. There has been damage to some of the footpaths leads to the site, but now they're doing some improvements there. The people in charge were saying, well, if the footpaths had to be repaired anyway, let's go ahead and make improvements while we're at it. So they're going to add a brand new information center, and they're going to plant all new native plants along these new hiking paths. And this is unfortunately one of those places that's kind of being quote unquote loved to death. It's pretty overcrowded and it isn't the kind of site that can handle the large number of visitors that it gets. So hopefully the stuff they can do with these new improvements can help make it a little bit better place to visit while having a less of a negative impact on the site itself. In other news, there was a huge sandstorm that affected the Canary Islands. These are islands off the west coast of North Africa that are technically part of Spain. But on February 24th, a huge sandstorm was kicked up when winds up to 75 miles an hour brought tons of red sand over from the Sahara. This is not unheard of for the Canary Islands being that it is downwind of the Sahara, but it was an unusually large sandstorm. It caused a lot of disruption in air travel. All the flights were canceled for a couple of days. And the overall climate right now in the Canaries has not been great. It's been so dry and so windy that wildfires have been kicking up throughout the islands. The wildfires are not huge at this time, but about 500 people have had to be evacuated. In other world news, Earth has a new member to the 100 Million Club. Egypt's official population is now 101 million. This makes it the 15th most populous nation on Earth, and it's growing fast, which is pretty unusual because most developing nations, the population growth has been going down quite a bit, but in Egypt, it still remains pretty high. The population has tripled since 1960, and the vast majority of the population lives on just a tiny piece of land. The part of the country that the Nile River drains, which is about 5% of the total land of the country, is where 95% of the population lives, and about 20 million of those are in the capital alone, Cairo. The country is actually getting poorer, so this high population growth rate is not good for the country. So those are the, some of the stories I wanted to discuss talking about geography and earth science for the U.S. and the rest of the world for February of 2020. Check back at the beginning of each month where I'll give you more updates on geography news from around the world. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up so let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're into U.S. geography, travel, road tripping across the U.S., just everything from kind of a nerdy perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.